Well, I've got the grease. The grease I use is this stuff called Helimax XP Optical and Instrument Helicoid Grease. You don't need an awful lot. I put a smear across there in five or six places. And then work that in. That's running nicely. I want some around the outside where this sits in the, the focus mount. And where it runs on the guides, where the inner runs on those two guide posts, I'll put a tiny bit in there too. Now, how's this going? Well, from practice, I always mark it with two marks across at the bottom and one at the top. So I know it goes this way up, drops into the mount. And I'm checking the action. That's nice and smooth. So the retainer plate can go on. That only fits on in one position. And there are four small flathead or countersunk screws that hold this plate down. So I'll get those in. And tighten them up as usual get the screws all started once you've got them all started go around and tighten them up that's it all in I check the action of that helical Yeah, that seems smooth enough. That's good. I'm going to collapse the bellows and get the four screws in that go through the front standard and hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Here are the four long black screws. Just run them down till they're all in place, then tighten them up slightly. Don't want to overdo it, they're quite small screws. You could snap them easily. So now the bellows are fully attached to the back of the front standard, and the focus mount is all in. The focus scale ring can go in now. That's held in place with four screws. And I can see where it needs to be relative to the how to focus helical because I have my lines that I'd scribed across it are quite visible. These four screws you don't need to do them up tight. If you do them up tight all you'll achieve is that you'll end up distorting probably the outer focus helical and as a result the focus will be stiff. As long as the rest of the mechanism is cleaned and lubricated correctly you don't need to go overboard tightening these screws up. So here I'm just shifting this to line up 
my marks here and here when I'm happy that that's in the correct position I'll snip the heads of those four screws down I'm just checking the action and the focus is nice and smooth Where's the next piece? Where's my coupling? Here it is, hiding. Okay, so this coupling for the rangefinder needs to go on next. Now this has been through the ultrasonic cleaner and this hinge joint here has got no lubrication in it at all as a result. So I'm going to put a drop of oil on there. And the oil I'm using here was Nye oil. And uh, it can be had for an absolutely exorbitant price from micro tools in the United States. But um, I bought a bottle, oh, I don't know, at least 15 years ago. I haven't come to the end of it yet. And I never use much of it anyway, it's about the only place I put oil in a camera is on that particular little elbow joint for the rangefinder coupling. So I'm going to put that into place now here. It's always tricky to get that through the gap. Two small screws hold this to the inner helical. Run that one down, find its mate. These screws are much like the ones here except they are smaller and of course smaller thread size so if you use them in one of the other positions firstly it's not going to hold very well and secondly it's going to be a bugger to get it back out again when you realize your mistake so it's worth sorting your screws out so that you don't make that mistake. See if I can get this screw started correctly. This time. You can see that that stud there moves backwards and forwards as I move the focusing scale. That's our coupling for the rangefinder. A little bit of synthetic grease. At the top here, I want to put a little bit either side of that uh, pin to lubricate its track. When the front of the camera is collapsed, which it won't do at the moment because our transfer shaft's not lined up, when the front of the camera is collapsed, that shit whole arm swings back down the track out of the way. And once it's extended to the normal operating position, this post here moves pretty much in a straight line. So, what's next? Well our transfer shaft is a little bush or a guide that goes on there. Now depending on the mod that your Retina 3C camera may or may not have that piece, the later ones didn't. They were slightly different here. So I'll put some grease on the transfer shaft, the front part of it. 
I'm putting just a smear of grease on the front part of that. The front housing here acts as the guide at the front. I'll get that in position. I'll extend this up so I can get to things. And there are two chrome screws that hold that in position. Now normally I just get the first screw started down the bottom here. Run it up very lightly. Put the one here at the top. Now if one of those screws is damaged because somebody's been clumsy with a screwdriver, make sure the good screw's at the top where it can be seen. No one can see the one that's tucked in under here. So if there's one ugly screw, make it the one that's tucked away where no one can see it. I'm checking that that doesn't, that not the uh, focus scale ring doesn't scuff against it, and it doesn't. That's all good. So the front collapses and opens smoothly, as it should. Now yeah, my folk, my uh, leave that as it is collapsed. I'm going to put my rewind shaft in there now, which is here. The inner part of it is here, and the bush is here. And I've got two screws sitting here, which were otherwise clean ones from that. Uh, that I'd fished out to do the base of the camera. Just making sure there was no moisture up there. These parts have been through the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, they've been dried off carefully with a hairdryer, but you often end up with moisture trapped in pockets. Just making sure there was nothing there. So I fit the inner part of the rewind shaft there and the outer part typically I use some synthetic grease to grease that bush if it's unusually rough in action I would put some graphite grease there instead we'll see how we go with the synthetic grease That seems alright, that seems fine, we'll use that. Um, you can see where the chrome has rubbed off that shaft over time, it probably means it was uh, dusty or gritty and as a result it's just abraded away that chrome plating. Do those two screws up tight. It's our rewind shaft in place. Here's our strap lug from this end of the body. That's held in place with two screws. I'll just fish those out. There's a little bit of corrosion on here that um, that's chrome brass. I can tell by the copper colour of that corrosion that it's, the chrome's gone there effectively. That's alright, you won't see that and it won't be the worst scar that this camera has. I'll run these screws in. Now normally I find that they run through slotted holes. If I push this bracket right towards the end of the camera, so it's right up against the heads of those screws and do the screws up tight, that proves to be the correct position for that bracket in most cases. We're wanting these two screw holes at the top of the bracket of course to line up with the top of the case. Right, that looks good. Yeah, 
a film a shutter release here I'm just very carefully taking that out and lubricate that with a little bit of molybdenum paste Hit on the larger and the smaller diameters there there is a small bush that goes on here excuse me right well I've got that bush in place on that shaft I'll slide that back in place down here and while the shafts in place this piece can't fall out it almost fell out on me just before actually while I was busy working on it um, because I had that out so don't take that out when you're working on a camera unless you are prepared for a lot of grief I want to find a rubber band now to go across here to hold this shutter release in place so that it won't fall out on me so if I find out what I've done with my rubber band I'll be right of course it was right behind me the whole time so I just need to stretch that across there and it's just to hold this in place so it can't fall out when I tip the camera upside down so that I don't end up losing this piece here which otherwise has a handy habit of twisting around, falling out, getting stuck between the bellows and the shroud and uh, requiring an awful lot of work to put everything back together again that's good I need to put the front door back on the camera now I'm looking at the state of this um, checking that the arms aren't bent out at all it looks quite good strangely enough it's a bit dirty but it's otherwise in quite good order I'll zoom out a bit not seeing enough here I'll extend the front bit of synthetic grease in there and there fit the front door in position and the door is held in with a pivot screw at top and bottom I'm finding those now in my container of screws and stuff from the cleaner There are three screws, much the same. One will be cleaner than the others, and almost certainly that's the one from the sprocket shaft. The two dirtier ones are probably from the door. There's a washer, spacer washer sat here on top of the door hinge. Sometimes cameras will have one washer, sometimes they'll have two. They may be at the top or the bottom position. They may be in both positions. See that they go back, otherwise the door will have a rattle. I can see that this one really needs another washer. It didn't have another washer before, so I need to find a washer for it. So I'll sort through my selection of washers, find a washer that I like the look of. one there but it's probably too thin and it's one the same I can put two in together and it would do the job but that's troublesome I'd much rather put one in and be done with it I've got one of the appropriate thickness I think so that's going to go in at the bottom of the door here go 
You'll check it's going to fit. Yes, it does. Use the tip of my tweezers to pull it into line. And get that hinge pin screw in position. Now this screw, you might remember, was loose when the camera arrived. It had backed out of the hole pretty much completely. That's good. The door opens and shuts nicely. Absolutely no slop in it. That's pretty much ideal. My next task, after I get rid of these washers, is to finish putting the film advance components in the body. Oh well you just missed me putting the film advance shaft back in the camera there because I was busy listening to the news at the time. But uh, never mind, I'll try and focus up the job at hand and get the clutch here reassembled. I'm lubricating this with graphite grease as I like the, uh, the feel that the graphite grease gives to this component. And if I find the right pliers, I can assemble it. The interruption earlier was one of my customers coming around to, so I could uh, make some fine adjustment to the range finder on this camera. Which didn't take very long at all. Right, let's get this spring held in place, rotate that clutch on my pliers, put the outer in position. And there we have it, the clutch is assembled. Nice and smooth in action, it moves smoother in one direction than the other, and that's exactly as it should do. And that smooth direction is the direction it does need to move. It never needs to move in the other direction. I'll pop that on there. I'll just rotate that till it engages with the take-up spool. And now I need to put the guide in place. The guide bush at the top here supports the film advance shaft. I've just lubricated the gear on the top of the guide here. This is the guide bush from the film advance shaft. And I'll get that into position. I'll just rotate the take up spool while I'm doing this so that the gear engages correctly. That's good. And this is held in place with two screws. One of them is this shoulder screw that supports the cocking rack. And on the other side we have a ratchet. So I'll find the screw for that. The bush. And the little ratchet pawl itself. So first the bush goes on here and the bush has got one side's got a slight countersink to it, the countersink goes down. If you put the countersink up you will have a bad time of it. Our ratchet pull goes on this way and the screw, which I'm just going to put a touch of grease at the top there so that the ratchet pull runs smoothly, goes through the ratchet pull, through the bush, through the guide bush for the film advance shaft and into the casting. That's sitting there. I haven't done that screw up tight yet. Um, I'll need to do that. Get this rotated into the correct rest position. 
that's better. So there's a spring needs to go on the, to this little ratchet pull and I had that loose earlier because it was trying to uh, get away. Let's pop this in position. I, it goes on here and acts like that. I'll do these two screws up tight. And I need to get the gear on the top here now. So normally I put some synthetic grease on the underside of that and the uh, perimeter of the underside. Get this in position. Rotate that counterclockwise, it'll push the ratchet pull out of the way. Line the center up front and back. Now this was assembled incorrectly when the camera arrived. It should be this way up. This piece goes on. I'm having trouble with my camera batteries. The uh, battery I just had on here went flat unexpectedly early. And this one is showing us fairly flat too. So the recording may just cease without much warning. We'll get the screw in place here. do that up tight. That's my film advance shaft in position. At the base of the camera I want to get the lock lever for the um, rewind button in place. So normally I put a smear of molybdenum paste on here on the tip where it engages with the film advance and usually I just wipe that around the, the centre where the screw runs to, just just out of just for convenience really, not because that's the ideal lubricant for that particular place, it's just um, convenience because it's in my hand at the time. The return spring for this. It looks a little bit less than symmetrical. I'll see if I can get that in the best position and the screw is a shoulder screw one shoulder is for the spring to revolve around one shoulder is for the lever to revolve around Having trouble getting this to pick up the hole in the body casting. That's good check everything is free, that nothing is trapped underneath one of the shoulders, do that screw up tight. Got to lift the end of that spring rack back behind the lever. And where have I got it? On the wrong side. I should do that, loosen that screw up, move my spring across, it's sitting in the wrong position. It's getting a bit dark here, it's a uh, dirty day. Right, let's 
do that up again and try again. Move that spring across behind that lever. That's it. That's correctly in position. So, the sprocket shaft. Here's our sprocket shaft. The slotted side goes up. And the shaft itself is here. Need to put a little bit of lubricant on the shaft towards the top, towards the bottom. And typically, I put a little bit right on the gear at the top. Not much, not as much as that. That's where it meshes with the film advance. And why is that not dropping in? That's better. Just line that up. Line it up with the hole in the casting at the bottom. Pull back that lever. That's great. Just close the front of the camera up so it'll lie flat. Move my film advance forward. So I've got to get the screw in here that drives the sprocket shaft the sprocket from the sprocket shaft and that's a screw the same in this case as we use for the hinge screws for the front and this one for reasons best known to itself doesn't want to play the game Now it's dropped into the body casting. Let's find it. Start again. The screw just doesn't want to start. Of course, this is one of the three screws which are otherwise identical, and one of them was the bottom hinge screw for the front door. And the bottom hinge screw for the front door also didn't want to go in place when I was taking the camera apart. Perhaps the thread on the end of this screw is a little bit blurred over. I just cannot get that thing to start. Let's just try lining that up. It's playing very hard to get. Once more. No, it won't start. Oh, is it going to start there? I'll bring you back when I've worked out the secret. <laughs> 